A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we love because God, he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love the God whom he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. From fraud and violence he shall redeem them, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. May they be prayed for continually. Day by day shall they bless him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. May his name be blessed forever. As long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Lord, every nation on earth shall adore you. Alleluia, 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 The Lord has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him 
and were amazed at the gracious works that came from his words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. We certainly are in the late and concluding days of the Christmas season, and we've had lots of opportunities to continue to listen to the wonderful messages, to celebrate so many different kinds of saints, uh, so many different personalities who became saints, for, uh, is what I meant, and to have an opportunity to let that Spirit of God inflame us and help us along the way. Yesterday we had the feast of Saint Andre, uh, who was not very smart according to all um, standards, but he was a miracle worker. When he died, over a million people came to his funeral. You imagine that? He was a doorkeeper. He became a saint. Today we celebrate the memorial of Saint Raymond of Penafort, who was an absolute scholar, unbelievably smart and sophisticated, and put canon law together. He's the patron of canonists and lawyers. He did all these wonderful things. He lived to be 99 years old, and when he was like 60, he said that he would be the head of their order for two years because of his advancing age. He lived 30 years more. So, whatever, huh? Can't do it because it's just two years, I'm too old, he says to the people, and then 30 years later he dies. So, how God lifted him up. But he was tremendously intelligent and did so many wonderful things. Both of these men, at opposite ends of the intelligence scale, became saints because they love God. And how many times in this Christmas season have we heard the message of God is love, we're supposed to love God because he has loved us first, and to make sure that everybody would know and God would know that we love him, we would make it happen in what we do and how we act. And if we mess up, we'd be forgiven because God is merciful. St. John kind of gives us in today's reading the whole foundation of what it means to be on the way to sainthood, everything we need to do. And then he says, God's commandments are not burdensome. Anybody want to talk about that? Sometimes they do seem burdensome, don't they? They lead us to good. They help us from being evil. But many days they are burdensome. But we do our best, don't we? Jesus goes to his hometown. Everybody loves him. Everybody loves him. What happened there? Remember later on? They were chasing him out of the synagogue, taking him to the, the brink of the hill because they wanted him out, get away from us. Wow, what a great con uh, conversion that was for a lot of people. But yet, God's truth and God's love prevailed. So as we celebrate today, let's uh, continue to acknowledge the goodness of the Christmas season. Let's continue to acknowledge Jesus as Savior and the one who leads us to goodness. He leads us to heaven. We can follow these great saints. And may he bless you.